Hello and welcome to the Medics Guide. Today we're going to cover Maritzi syndrome. So like always, grab your pen and paper and let's get started. Now Maritzi syndrome is actually a rare condition caused by the obstruction of the common bowel duct or common hepatic duct by external compression from gallstones. So let's look at a picture of the biliary tree to try and understand it a little better. So over here you can see the hepatic ducts and the common hepatic duct which joins with the cystic duct to form the common bowel duct uh, and of course the gallbladder over here. Now gallstones are usually formed from bile when it's in stasis and bile is actually stored within the gallbladder. Now when bile is not fully emptied from the gallbladder it can precipitate a sludge and subsequently form gallstones. Now if one of these stones gets stuck in the infundibulum which is this upper part of the gallbladder or the cystic duct itself then what it can do is it can cause compression of one of these com common hepatic ducts or common bowel ducts uh, and that will eventually lead to inflammation and obstruction. Now because of this inflammation it typically tends to cause pain and this pain is usually in the right upper quadrant where the gallbladder sits and it's usually associated with some sort of systemic upset so patients will often complain of nausea and vomiting uh, and perhaps fever-like symptoms as well. Now the pain radiates to the mid back and the right shoulder uh, and is usually associated with fatty food ingestion as well. Now the classical physical examination will demonstrate right upper quadrant pain with deep palpation uh, and that's called Murphy's sign. Now the presentation of Maritzi syndrome is actually really similar to acute cholecystitis but with the addition of jaundice. Now this is because the obstructed duct can no longer let bile pass through. So if we go back to this picture we can see bile can no longer pass through uh, and as a result it backflows and when it backflows there's a significant pressure build up and then uh, eventually what will happen is that the bile will leak through these endothelial cells that line the ducts itself and then go into the blood. Now because of chronic inflammation it can eventually lead to duct wall necrosis which then can eventually form fistulas and fistulas are essentially just openings from the gallbladder into the common bowel duct. Now based on that we can categorize Maritzi syndrome into four different types. Now type 1 involves no fistula at all and type 2, 3 and 4 involve fistulas and the, the difference between these types is essentially how big the fistula is. So if it's smaller than 33% of the common hepatic duct diameter it's type 2 if it's between 33 and 66% is type 3 and if the fistula is larger than 66% of the common hepatic duct diameter then it's type 4. It's quite easy to remember. Now with this picture I just kind of want to demonstrate that this is a 3D image and that a stone doesn't actually have to be right on the edge of the cystic duct in order to cause compression. It can be anywhere around and that's because the cystic duct often wraps around and so even if the stone is on this part which is quite far down the cystic duct it can still cause compression of the common hepatic duct if it's in this position over here. I just want to illustrate that to you. Now investigation wise in most cases it's very hard to detect and when that happens it can lead to significant injury however when seeing a patient with this sort of presentation we should always go for an abdominal ultrasound and that's because it's quick it's easy and it will show stones in a contracted gallbladder. It's not as good as ERCP and that's because ERCP can really help to confirm the diagnosis. It can determine whether a fistula is present, it can show you if there's any dilatation of the biliary system above the level of the stone and it can tell you quite a lot of information regarding the size of the stone and if there's any other pathology present, uh, things like features of malignancy. Now Maritzi syndrome is associated with an increase in cholangiocarcinoma as recent studies have shown. Now in terms of routine bloods, the most obvious one will be the liver function test which will be abnormal and when you're interpreting a liver function test you'll often see a very raised ALP and the bilirubin in over 90% of patients and this pattern of results also indicates an obstructive jaundice. Now just one thing before I go on to the management is that the presence of jaundice in combination with the other presenting symptoms of Maritzi syndrome, the right upper quadrant pain, uh, the fever like symptoms, the systemic upset sorry. It can sometimes be mistaken for other causes, the things like common bile duct stones, ascending cholangitis, uh, biliary cancer, pancreatic cancer. So just be aware that 
there are a lot of differentials that you should consider and these are very important as well now back to back to the management ERCP as well as being important for the diagnosis is also got quite a good use in terms of the management and it's got a therapeutic use as well and it can actually help to alleviate some of the stenosis caused by the inflammation but ultimately surgery is indicated and a total cholecystectomy is probably beneficial in most cases so just to uh, finish things off as always I've got a really good mnemonic for you and as we're talking about stones it would be rude of me not to make a mnemonic about uh, st uh, with with the word stone in as well so stone stands for surgery tunnels which refers to fistula formation obstructive jaundice neoplasia risk and extrinsic compression and just a couple of questions just to th end things off 53 year old lady presents to the ed with a two-day history of right upper quadrant pain and has been vomiting she has a temperature of 38.5 degrees and is visibly jaundice and ERCP shows dilated common hepatic and intrahepatic ducts and we've got some blood results here that show bilirubin, which is high. The ALT and AST are high. ALP is very high. Gamma GT is high. Uh, protein is a bit low. And there's a normal white cell count there as well. So obviously we know that the answer is Maritzi syndrome. We've got a high bilirubin, a high ALP. We've got the right upper quadrant pain with systemic upset and jaundice. And we've got the dilated ducts as well that the ERCP shows. But just to go over these other ones, so biliary colic typically causes right upper quadrant pain, um, which will usually last for 30 to 40 minutes, but there is no jaundice and you don't really get that. Similarly with cholecystitis, you don't really get this jaundice either. Cholangiocarcinoma is a very important differential, but given that there's no history of weight loss, there's no history of uh, any of those B symptoms, night sweats, tiredness, fatigue, and of course, that the fact that cholangiocarcinoma is usually painless jaundice, we can kind of rule that out. Uh, and pancreatitis usually causes epigastric pain, which radiates to the back, and you won't have jaundice in that either. And the last question is just a continuation. Given the diagnosis, Muritzi syndrome, what long-term complication is she at risk of? Major hemorrhage, infection, malignancy, duodenal ulcers, and pancreatitis. Well, as we mentioned earlier, cholangiocarcinoma is a complication and that is the answer here so thank you very much for listening that's all we've got for you today uh, please like subscribe comment if you've got any questions or if you've got any recommendations of topics that you want us to cover and we'll be back with another video soon